If you recall, I mentioned earlier the review in Guitarist magazine, which said pros and cons, cons for, for the money it's hard to fault. I agree, absolutely. Though our sample was in need of a basic setup. That phrase, I think, um, totally understates the situation. I'll tell you why. I think if you work for Guitarist, you're almost certainly going to have the skills to do what they're referring to as a basic setup. But these guitars will certainly appeal to beginners. Um, and they wouldn't know how to do a basic setup. They probably wouldn't be able to afford either just to simply take the guitar to a, a local guitar tech or luthier and say, I think I want a setup. They might not even know they'll need a setup. Um, and this leads me on to a, a gripe I've had for years with guitar manufacturers is you get something like this, which, you know, there's a lot of metal, there's a lot of moving parts, lots of bits, there's springs involved, God knows what, um, never mind the electrics. And nothing comes in the box. There's no instruction leaflet. Um, and I think that applies to pretty well all the manufacturers and all the guitars I've ever bought over the years, even really expensive ones. I think when you, if you buy something like a Fender, Stratocaster, Telecaster, Ultra, you, you do sometimes get a little leaflet describing what goes on. But, but they all seem to take for granted that you know your way around a guitar. And, and most people don't. I mean, I've been playing now for decades and I, I can play a bit. But I'm not interested in all the, the techie details. Now, I know some people will buy one of these. I've seen them on YouTube, stick it on a workbench and they've got all their tools there. And they take the back off and they, they, they tell me what's going on. And they sort of take the pickups out, see what's underneath, you know, and put an extra bit of sp all that stuff. Beginners won't know. And I think there ought to be some basic leaflet that talks you through a number of things, which I'm now going to show you. Um, what I think needs some guidance. Um, let's start perhaps with the tremolo. Now this is a Wilkinson tremolo. Oops. It's a Wilkinson tremolo model WV5 50 2 as in II K. Now, in all the years I've played guitars, I'm used to the bridges and tremolos that come with Stratocasters. I've never had a guitar with a Wilkinson tremolo. Now, I ended up last night Googling myself to death, <laughs> trying to find how the hell you operate these. Now, I know Trav Wilkinson is a, a stout, old uh, scholar of the guitar industry. He's been around for years, invented a lot of stuff invented these because he felt that the Fender Stratocaster bridges and tremolo systems had a lot of shortcomings. So he designed something that didn't have those shortcomings. But in doing so, he's, <laughs> I'll show you in a second, he's had to do a trade-off and introduce other shortcomings um, that, that perhaps weren't there with good old Leo Fender's design. But there we are, you know, you pay your money, it takes your choice. But the, I can just show you this. Okay, there's the basic setup. Now, what a beginner won't know, and I didn't know until I Googled it, is that, as you probably know, tremolos, some people like to have them so that the, they're floating. So you can pull the strings up and get higher notes and press the, thing, strings, uh, press the tremolo arm down and get uh, lower notes and sometimes play wild games on it. I don't, I'm a, I'm a decked tremolo, as they call it, person, um, occasionally using a tremolo just to play. Never pull up, that's me. So, but if you're a beginner, uh, you won't know all that. You won't know probably what your preferences are and you won't have a clue how to go about it. Now, I found, when I first picked up this guitar, I got it out of the box, um, I could tell there was some strings on it that were a bit heavier than my usual Ernie Ball nines. Um, in fact, I discovered that Harley Benton, to their credit, put uh, uh, Daddario tens on 
on these guitars, um, which is cool because most manufacturers would simply bung on the cheapest strings they can get um, at this price range. Must remember that. So all credit to them, but it was a pretty hard play. And not only that, I found that it was murder trying to get the tremolo arm down. So there's some, I thought, well, from what I, my limited technical knowledge, the, um, it's probably because there's uh, tough springs in the back or more strings than are necessary. So I like to have a tremolo that uh, is, as I said, decked at the back, but when you push it down, it's not like, mm, which this one was. And the strings are say Anyway, so what I did yesterday, I decided to try and give it a basic setup. Uh, I, I say basic because I wouldn't venture so far as to question whether the, the nuts are cut accurately. Uh, I don't have the tools for that. And, well, I do actually, but I wouldn't even dream of, of giving it a go because if you overdo it, you're in real trouble. Then you need a new nut. And that's certainly beyond, beyond uh, my abilities. So I won't fiddle with things that I could easily mess up. But I wanted to bring the action down um, and ease the, the, the tremolo bar situation. But I then had to go and find out on Google how you actually do that because here's Mr. Wilkinson's saddles. Okay, so they have those two screws in each saddle that you usually use to raise and lower. And in my case, I wanted to lower the action. But I can't quite show you it here, but you can probably see it. Is that by the time I lowered these to get an action anywhere near I wanted, oh, I found that they maxed out. They were touching this bottom plate. So I go on Google and then find out I've started wrong. I shouldn't have done anything with those. I should have screwed these two posts down, pivot posts. This is the, there's a waste on each of those screws. Can you see them? And that's where the blade of the tremolo goes in and the whole thing pivots on that. But what you're supposed to do is to screw these down, which lowers the whole business. By the way, I put the saddles back up a little bit. Uh, and once you've done that, then fine tune the height of the saddles to get your action. Now, the other thing is before you do that, you've got to loosen these. Now, these are not found on Fender Stratocaster saddles. Those, those lock those saddles down. The question is, oh, why is that then? Well, as you can see that you haven't got the usual springs in here and you have got these screw adjustment screws at the back but they'll only go one way. Now, even if you loosen these, you've then got to presumably get a sliver of wood and a gentle hammer to push these backwards and forwards to get the intonation right. Now, I haven't yet done that because that seems a flipping nightmare. So that's what I mentioned earlier. To me, that's the, the poor trade-off. Um, those Not having those springs so that you can freely adjust the intonation and move these backwards forwards until you've got the intonation correct so i'm not going to interfere with that in fact i'm taking this guitar to, to julian wallace uh, my guitar tech i'm seeing him next week just to put the finishing touches to it because there's certain things as i said i don't want to to muck about with so having lowered that uh brought these saddles up so i've got enough play to raise and lower them finely, if you follow me. Um, so that's that. Now, the mysteries of the, the Wilkinson Bridges, eh? I couldn't even find a PDF instruction uh, leaflet put out by Wilkinson. Well, I did find one that was in Pigeon English. It, uh, it was a bit weird, but it was a little bit helpful. But and it's strange, you should have a whole instruction leaflet, as I said, particularly for people who are new to this. Um, so they know what all these things do and to what degree they can change things and to what degree they should leave them alone. Um, and even a, a hoary old player like me 
needs a bit of guidance on those sort of things. Uh, pickup adjustment. This pickup here was far too high. It was nearly touching the strings. This one on the neck, that's not too bad. But that one was pretty high, and especially when I turned these screws, these pivot post screws, brought the, the action down. These were nearly touching. Um, so you then have to get a screwdriver and go into these. At first, because I didn't want to damage anything, I turned them clockwise to what I thought was lowering the pickup. And I thought, whew, that's just, that just screws the pickups down, doesn't it? So I didn't want to be too uh, heavy with it. But I did find out, again, by looking on Google, that I was okay to proceed, that uh, I can turn those and bring the pickups down. Um, probably still need a, um, a bit of adjustment. But then Julian will have one of those gauges that you can plug in and check that the decibel output balance of the pickups is, uh, is okay. What about this arm? Well, you, you get, there's a little hole in there, which is nice. So there's a shim in there and you can adjust the, the tightness of what, so this of the tremble arms doesn't drop away. But in addition to that, I found that this one is like the old fenders, a screw in. So you can screw that in. Um, and at, that and at that position, fine-tune the, the grip that it has on it. But what I didn't know was that if necessary, you can adjust that. If you can see in there, that's the other end of the thread, threaded tube there. that that then screws into. So that can be adjusted. So there's a number of adjustments. Um, the only clue you get is that in the box, again, I think this would be all of a bit of a mystery to, <laughs> you don't get one uh, Allen key, you don't get two you don't get three well you do you get three allen keys plus this one now, of course you and i know that's to adjust the neck relief if you need to adjust for it so there's three different types of that's the most i've ever had usually you get two at the most um, plus something to to adjust the truss rod with but there we are so any new newbie without a leaflet would go what the what are all these for? Mm. So it's got truss rod wheel adjustment there. So, right, then I decided to take the back off to see if I could do something about easing the uh, tremolo to what, uh, it, so it doesn't have quite so much resistance. So it did, it did come with three springs, so I've taken the middle one out. Now, these are Real brutes. These are very, very, very stiff. So three of those, that's what was holding the tremolo bar up <laughs> and making it therefore difficult to press down. So you t I know just about enough when you remove that, then your tuning goes out because of course all the uh, the gubbins in here is, is moved. So you then have to screw these this claw further into the guitar and rebalance everything. All right. So there, a short walking tour um, of the engine in this in this vehicle. Uh, but I repeat, if you're new to this, you might pick it out of the box and start to play it. And later on, you might think, oh, God, this is so hard learning to play the guitar. It's, I can't hold the strings down, they're very high off the fretboard. I don't know how to change that. So, guitar manufacturers in this budget price range particularly, don't assume that whoever buys the guitar knows all that stuff that I've just been banging on about um, for the past few minutes. 
give us a little leaflet um, so that people know about intonation or they could be steered in the right direction. I think it's it's another sign of the times, really, isn't it? It's like, nah, we can't really bother, that'll cost, you know, we have to pay somebody to write it, technical author. And then we got paper that, uh, uh, never mind. People will look on the internet. You know, never been. Trouble is, you can look on the internet for people fettling their guitars, and uh, often you'll find incorrect advice um, or less accurate advice than should be the case. So, there it is, um, just having a look to see if there's anything else to tell you, but um, now that I've done these basic adjustments, things are working more smoothly now. I've got the action fairly low. I don't put, I have got gauges so I could measure the height, but to be honest, I know I mean, most people who are experienced guitarists will know when it's the right height. And that's about... That's about right for me. So, no, it's still a great guitar. I'm really very pleased with it. Um, but it's a lovely... It feels lovely, this finish as well is looking lovely. So I'm going to trot this along to Julian on Tuesday um, and uh, just get him to do any uh, finishing touches to, to the setup. But there we are, gripe session over. <laughs> and uh, I apologise to everybody viewing that might already know this stuff. Um, but congratulations if you've made it this far um, and uh, listen to me have a, a good old chunter. I still full, thoroughly recommend the guitar. Value for money. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. It honestly is. Thanks.
Right, thanks for making it this far. Just uh, a final quick summing up. Um, pros and cons, the guitar is excellent value for money. Absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, for £389, you're getting a guitar that, uh, quite, quite frankly, uh, has all the features that you'd expect of something about eight or £900. Um, beautiful roasted Canadian flame maple neck which goes through to the fingerboard. We can see the, the slight flaming effect there. Very comfortable C-shaped neck. The locking tuners. It also has, by the way, a, a graph tech nut. What are the cons? Well, you do need to know a fair amount of, about guitars uh, in order to set it up to your own specifications. And I think the raw beginner who might be attracted to this sort of instrument at that price probably may not have the knowledge to do that. String height needed adjusting. The action was pretty stiff, not only because it had 10 gauge strings, which I've replaced with nines, um, but also because the two very strong springs in the, the tremolo, the Wilkinson tremolo. Now I've taken one out, so it's a lot more comfortable now. Question, would it benefit from a pickups upgrade? I I don't know, I'm not gonna go in that direction just yet. I've played it for a few days now and I'm getting some very nice tones out of it. Did have to adjust a couple of the, the screw pole pieces, but you usually have to do that anyway to, to suit your, again, playing style. And in my case, I don't use a pick, I use my fingers. So I tend to like the pickups to slant upwards to give me uh, a louder response, um, if I can put it that way, for what I'm playing with just fingers. So, but that's just me. Um, so no, I won't be upgrading the pickups yet because they, they sound okay. Um, I've already touched on the fact that I think that guitars like this should come with some sort of set of instructions, um, just basic stuff which people new to guitars um, could well do with, uh, particularly this Wilkinson Bridge. I had to do a lot of searching on the internet in order to, um, to find out the, the pros and cons. In the end, I, I, didn't, I gave up, to be honest. Um, I did take the guitar to my guitar tech, Julian Wallace. Uh, I'm based in Cornwall and he actually lives uh, in Cornwall as well in Penzance. And you might have might recognize Julian Wallace's beaming face um, as the, the chap who fixes guitars on the BBC show Repair Shop. So he uh, did some little tweaks. He did cut one or two of the nut slots down to let the, the, the string action go lower. And he also did the intonation of the, the Wilkinson bridge. Um, uh, finally, the fret markers are dark, dark dots on a fairly dark fingerboard and the more observant of you might have noticed that they're no longer dark because what I've done is replaced them with something that looks like abalone, is that the word? But they're actually uh, fret, uh, fret look fretboard stickers which I put on um, so that just makes it a bit more visible to me. There are these I think lumen lay dots on the side but to be frank I think you have to be in a fairly dark place with some ambient light before they'd show up anyway. So there it is. Uh, you finally got to the end. <laughs> if you enjoyed the journey uh, please consider subscribing it would help me a lot. And I'll see you on the next uh, on the next video. Bye.